Dum da da dum 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 dum. Something like that. It's like the Olympics. Mm, have you been watching? Not really. Oh. I mean, we watched a little bit on the boat, and then we watched a little bit um, at Angie's when we were playing poker the other night. Oh yeah. But that is about the extent of it. Have extent you been it. watching it? About the same. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Good morning, world. Good morning, world. My face is swollen. Oh, no. I've got a lot of, like, weird body parts that are swollen. Like, I woke up and my wrist was swollen. So, I don't know, what's, I don't know what's going on other than I just... Ugh. Yeah, I'm allergic to... <laughs> she, Jennifer found out the other day that I have the wrist the size of a man. Yeah. But, like... I can't even touch my because normally I can yeah, at least touch my fingers. Yeah, you're supposed to be able to, right? I can't. I'm swollen. I don't know. Dang, what's, I don't know Becky. what's going on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Good Could, thing you got that elastic over there, right? You know, that's probably like. Well, I, well, if you look at my wrist, like Ugh. it had, uh, it was a whole situation. But this one's softer than the other one, so that's we'll good. see. Yeah. Anyway, so Anyhow. part of my appearance world with my swollen face and mm. swollen body parts. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This will do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Anyway, so we got a couple of you here. We'll go ahead and talk. So, vacation. Yeah. How 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 did your vacation go, Jen? It's good to be away, but it's great to be back. <laughs> like five days, I think, is my max. Your max. Yeah. Like I don't need to be away that nine. long. Oh my god. <laughs> Fourteen days is mine. I would love to be able to go to sea for that long. Mm. Yeah. I don't. I think max six days, five nights, but. Mm. I don't like I just I missed Louie mm -hmm. I was anxious to get back and like get back into the swing of things with work and mm -hmm. I don't know but it was great yeah everybody has their limits yeah, yeah. Um, if I could live on vacation I would and never work again <laughs> if someone could figure out how to tell me how to make money and live on vacation so I never have to work again I will do uh, that. Ma'am, you know the answer to that. It's called investing in investing real estate. In real estate. <laughs> I, know. I actually was talking to Will about this. I was like, I've got to figure out how to work this backwards. How much passive income do I need in order to be able to sustain a life living on a cruise ship mm. so that we could pay the property management company, I get paid money, and not actually have to work? Like, mm. that's, that's the reality. So <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. I did decide that my 45th birthday, 10 years from now, because I just turned 35. Happy birthday to me. Um, at, that my 45th birthday, I will be taking a year off at 45 and sailing around the world. That is my new goal, and that's going to happen. Yes. So, I'll see you guys. Just send me postcards. Exactly. I'll see you guys at, when I'm turned 46. Aww. <laughs> that'll be, be fun. Yeah, it'll yeah. be fun for you. I think so. Anyway, so all the, like, all, not all the things, but there's a lot of stuff that happened while we were away. And it started out with Jen sitting in an airport. Well, it was, were we in the airport or were we in the line of the cruise line? We were, I did the lease on the plane. Gotcha. Yeah. So, got, so uh, back story to the lease. Go. Yeah. So rental is insecured. Cool. I was, you know, intended just to do, drop the lease. The mm -hmm. landlords found the tenant. They just wanted me to drop the lease. Blah, 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 blah. So we get that done. Saturday, we accept the tenant. Well, Saturday, I'm running around like a bat out of hell, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get everything prepared for our very early departure Sunday morning. 6 a.m. Yeah. 3.30 a.m. 3.30 last Like, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. to get rid of she was working out. But yeah. It was, well, because we had to leave the house by 4.30. Yeah. 4.45, even though it turned into 5. But it's fine. Um, so, yeah. So, drafted the lease on the plane. Everything's good. Shame on me. I made an assumption about one of the owner's last names being the same. My gut said to double check. I didn't. So, I plugged mm. in the wrong information. That is 100% my fault. But then the other piece was... Um, yeah, there were some terms that the tenant wasn't actually prepared to agree to. So, drafted up this beautiful lease, sent it out to everybody. And, um, yeah, then we get international, get into international waters. And... Oh, wait, no, there's more to that because your lease, the lease that she wrote on the plane, DocuSign. So, we, oh! have, we have hiccups with stuff all the time. So, if we tell you you're going to get it in an hour and you don't, you get it in three, there's there's probably a yeah, reason for that. There's a real reason. Yeah, yeah, did the whole lease, did everything. And then it just didn't like, save. Like the little sad, like apple face. Mm. Exercise. <laughs> mm. Yeah, didn't save. So I was like, cool, that's great. So I had to figure out how to do it later on. Um, yeah, and then once the lease went out, uh, 
there was some back and forth with poor communication because of international travel and cellular reception, hour and 15 minute phone call with Sprint, trying to figure that out. Hot mess. Um, two days go by, gave the tenant enough time to rethink things with all this back and forth. They decided to back out. Mm-hmm. So then we had to call Joshy on the clutch. <laughs> had to get him to update some paperwork for me. Now I'm scrolling out because I'm just thinking about how three hours, basically, of vacation was wasted and not gotten back. But it's fine. <laughs> um, because DocuSign went to hell. All because DocuSign went to hell. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It happens often. Well, the moral of the story is, is so... <laughs> You, because you weren't the one who negotiated the lease, the landlord. This is the reason why you hire a professional, Jen. Why do you hire a professional whenever you, you hire, because they hired her to write the lease, but they didn't hire her to negotiate the terms. No. So whenever you have terms that are insane, like, you, not, not insane, but like, it give them a little extra. Yeah, a little extra. Rundown. So it's expensive to go into a, a privately owned rental property, right? It's not like an apartment complex. Apartment complex, you give a $500 security deposit, if even boom, you can have crap credit, boom, you can BS your proof of income. Like, there's Mm -hmm. so many ways to get into an apartment. But when you go privately owned, it is a whole process. We're doing the whole credit, the whole background. We're calling to verify employment. We're, you know, looking at most recent tax returns. It's like like getting a mortgage. Yeah, it's harder. Mm -hmm. It's harder to rent than it is to purchase um, as far as qualifying. you know, collecting first month's rent up front, collecting security deposit equal to first month's rent. Now we're talking about a condo, so there's a $600 move-in fee, there's a $500 security deposit for elevator use, there's, uh, you know, what would normally be a repair deductible of 75 bucks. Well, this particular owner wanted $250. Which, um, who would actually, like, that's not, that's a lot. That's a lot. And then there was extra language written in to, you know, if in the event they go outside of the home warranty company and then it's completely liable for the tenant to pay. Like, it was just a lot of extra lingo um, that would scare anybody, anybody away yeah. in the right mind. Like, mm-hmm. so the tenant was looking at well over $6,000 just to get into the property. Um, so I get it. Um, but, you know. <laughs> he ended up saying, thank you, but no thank you. I'll take my take mm-hmm. my place somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. Which happens. I mean, I've had that happen for whenever I've represented a landlord. I've had tenants redo that yeah. just because of like because of weird things. Because until once you accept an application, that doesn't mean the person who accepted it has to right. release it. They right. can verbally agree to something, but as long as they don't sign, mm-hmm. that could be two weeks le- like two weeks from the time of background check and everything else. And two weeks lost if last minute they just decide, well, I don't want to do this. Yeah, it happens all the time, yeah. unfortunately. Absolutely. So, So, but it worked out. I mean, we're fully listed now. They are completely, like, exclusively listing the property with um, Easton Ivy Mm -hmm. right now. And we've got some showing set up for this week. Um, Made some adjustments to the language so that it does not scare away Mm -hmm. uh, any future tenants. Oh, good. So you were able to talk to them about that and explain exactly what happened. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's good. That's another reason why you hire a professional Mm -hmm. is to be able to have a conversation and be like, hey, guys, this is what happened. Yeah. Yeah, so we're feeling good there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. We're in a boat tour in Cayman Islands. We're outside in the boat, and there's a young couple from the rest of that jungle we in paradise. Aww. What? I don't really follow all that. Let's see. <laughs> Run a boat tour in the Cayman. Well, I've never been to the Cayman Islands, John Abbey. I would like to go. Uh, and uh, if I could run a boat. See, that's, like I think about this. Like, I mean, There's a joke that I always make. That I was like, you know what, if real estate goes to hell, I'm just going to buy an ice cream shop and sell, sell ice yeah, cream on the beach. That, yeah. um, but the reality is, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't yeah. want to I don't want to be stuck on an island. Like, all the places that we went, we went to some high Ethel. Ethel. We went to some really beautiful places. We went to St. Martin. We went to St. Thomas. Did we go to St. Thomas? Uh-huh. St. Thomas. And then we went to, um, the last one was Bahamas. And the Bahamas were, was absolutely gorgeous. The water was... A shade of turquoise that I've certainly never seen before. I've been to Freeport. Nassau looks way different than than uh, Freeport did, but beautiful. Got to swim with dolphins. All these things like, and that's the stuff that I enjoy is like the adventure and seeing all these different places and all of that. But like just living in one place, on one beach, doing the same thing every day. That sounds like my nightmare. Mm. So I don't think I would want to do that. No. Um, but maybe who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? You'll have a year to figure it out at the age of 45. Yeah, I'll have a year to figure it out. Well, no, i got to figure it out before, before that because i got to start paying for this thing like five years in advance. Can oh, you imagine yeah. <laughs> how much that would cost of yeah. 365 days on a cruise ship? But I feel like you could do... Yeah. 
You'll figure it out. I'm just going to call. I'll call Celebrity and be like, listen, it's going to be 52 cruises in one year, essentially. Because it's like back to back to back to back to back. It's you wouldn't like, want to pack. Like, would you switch ships? Or you'd stay I don't know. on? It depends. It depends on the route somewhere they're going. I would stay on a ship for like. As long as you could. Yeah, because you're not going to want to pack up and unpack every week. Yeah. I'll yeah. figure it out. I'll go travel manage. with an assistant. Yeah. That's what, who knows? Who knows where I'll be in 10 years? Maybe I'll have an assistant. Maybe yeah. I'll be famous and I will have for something. I don't know what I'm going to be famous for. Yeah. According to a psychic, Jen's going to be famous too. In five so. years. <laughs> in five years. So perhaps we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, perhaps we'll see where, where that goes. But yeah, my $230 phone call. So, oh, um, God. So this, <laughs> this whole thing started because I was like, I was, we came in home from an excursion, came home because that's what celebrity says whenever you're coming home. home. <laughs> welcome home. They give you a cold towel to wash your face and then they say, welcome home. Reach so I'm, with water and juices. Exactly. So I'm already on a high. I'm happy as can be. I'm like getting back on my ship. We just went on a catamaran and went snork. The snorkeling was terrible so in St. Martin, snorkeling. but the, the boat was beautiful and the yeah. company was great. So like, just got off the catamaran tour, wobbling back to the boat, got my little face towel, welcome home, I love you guys, dude, this is the best, go to the bar, and then I'm trying to order a drink, because they have this little craft cocktail bar, and it's a Tito, and it was this Tito's Punch, mm. um, and he's like, I'm sorry, ma'am, you're gonna have to go to see customer, he's like, I'm gonna write you a manual ticket right now, but you're gonna have to go see customer service, because your card's not working, I was like, what? I haven't had any problems so far. Right. Um, and he goes, I don't know what to tell you, but you got to go see customer service. I was like, fine. So I get my little Tito's punch and I go down to customer service and I have them run because on, whenever you're on a ship, they give you a card and the card is like your bank account. And so like everything you charge at the end of the day, they, they charge your, their card in one lump sum. Anyway, so I go and they're like, I'm sorry, like nothing is working. you it looks like your card got account, got flagged for fraud. I was like, you son of a biscuit. I, was nah. like, I told USAA that I was, that I was going out of the country. So I ended up going back to the, back to the room talk to them for a few minutes not thinking about anything and then all of a sudden my phone like i'm on the phone with them for a few minutes my phone rings and the next thing you know i'm talking to i had my house listed on the market so ryan and i have a big house in port potomac six thousand square feet gorgeous home had it listed we've had offers that are like i got one a hundred thousand dollars under list i got oh. one forty thousand dollars under list i got one uh, let's see here. We had a list of uh, $25,000 under list. Um, closer. yeah, closer. So I was like, it's like, no, I was like, I'm not negotiating with any of you clowns. Like this is not the market that we're in. We, and we are not pressed to sell this thing. Like if we, if, if we get what we want for it, we'll sell it. If not, then we'll wait until fall and do this again. Anyway, so I had an agent call, and I'm not thinking about anything because, like, I'm on Wi-Fi, and I oh, no. and, and iPhones are supposed to be on Wi-Fi calling. No friends. That's not necessarily how it works because, like, when you're on the ship, like, we're literally, we had left St. Martin, we're in the middle of the freaking ocean, it says on the thing, cellular at sea, and then connected to ship Wi-Fi because we had Wi-Fi the whole time. So I could have sworn that be, me being on a 10-minute phone call, because I was just talking about my house, the guy called, and he was like, hey, I showed it, they love it, but they want to offer you $100,000 less, would you negotiate? And I'm, like, laughing at this guy, and so then we ended up, like, kikiing for 10 minutes about, you know, about oh. whatever. Um, ching, ching, right, ching, but I wasn't thinking ching. about it because it was like perfect service. It was everything was fine. Um, so hang up, finish getting ready for dinner. We're going to a nice restaurant that night. Um, and then the next morning, I wake up to a phone a, from a freaking text message from T-Mobile that says, um, "You made a ten minute phone call and are now at and thank God that they give you these warnings because I could have easily had a two thousand dollar phone bill by the end of this trip. But they gave me a warning the next day and said you've been you use the phone for eleven minutes. Um, and at two dollars and fifty cents a minute. No, it was five ninety nine a minute. Oh, yeah, it was. God. Yeah, it was five ninety nine a minute, and then data usage on top of that. So, yeah, but anyway. So, pro tip before you go, and I've done a lot of international. Wait, what? How was the cruise and their safety protocols? Izzy, I'll tell you about that in a second. It was actually really incredible. Um, but where was what was I saying? Squirrel. Before you travel. Before you travel, call your cell phone carrier because for a mere $15, I got 10 days worth of coverage for the following, for at least the data portion of it. So I still couldn't use a, like, I still couldn't use a phone call, yeah. but it made it so incoming calls because t they would also charge you if you received an incoming call, it, you got charged a minute. So, and I didn't turn my phone off because I, I would look to see who was called because you never know. We have a lot of listings out right now. I have a lot of things under contract. Anything could have happened. I might have needed to answer the phone. But text messages were expensive. Everything. So, mm -hmm. you can always call and add an additional 10 days on your plan to be able to, yeah. to get that fixed. Yeah. Will ended up getting messed up. You got, I don't oh, know. Oh, mine my... was a hot mess. 
-hmm. I could send text. I couldn't receive text. Um, all of my communication was done through DMs. Mm -hmm. um, emails came through easy breezy, not a problem. And I didn't even mess around with phone calls. I was like, mm, I ain't playing this game. Yeah. But then I couldn't switch my Wi-Fi from my phone to my computer. And then my hotspot went to crap. Like, it, and that was the whole, like, DocuSign yeah. headache. I just, I wanted to do everything from my computer and I couldn't get it to connect for some reason. It well, just... I think it's because you can only, well, so on Celebrity, they have a new, uh, pro, not protocol, but they have a new package that you can buy, which is basically called like all included or mm -hmm. something like that so Multiple all of your lines yeah all of your drinks are included your wi-fi is included um your gratuities are included all that stuff uh and f for some reason i think that only included like one device per room or you or could per, purchase or you could purchase more yeah so that would be my pro tip to anybody who works for themselves who is on a cruise ship and they're gonna have to continue to work is buy the upgraded package it's gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks but you know worth it in the end yeah it was that was kind of a nightmare trying to get in any of this. But so Izzy asked, how is a cruise and their safety protocols? Um, well, somebody on our boat got COVID and that was the most interesting thing out of all. Like if you look at the, we weren't the only ship that this happened to. So, uh, we were at 40% capacity on a boat that could have 2,600 guests and 2,200 crew, I believe mm -hmm. is what they ended up saying. So we were at a little bit under 1,600 for guests and 900 for crew. So we were at 40% capacity. And it was anybody over the age of 12 that had to have 100% vaccination. Uh, like you had to have proof of vaccination whenever you get on the ship. So everything goes fine. We get on the ship. They have enhanced, like there was people walking around with spray bottles and hand sanitizer. And like, if you walked into any of the any restaurants, of the dining halls, you had yep. to put on, um, you had in the buffet, you actually had to go into the restroom and wash your hands. Oh, and, that, they, had and they had the hand yeah. sanitizer. So, but it was like, but it was not like aggressive or intrusive right. or anything like that. It was, they right. were the most friendly and like kind people yeah. that I've ever experienced, especially in an, an enhanced, uh, safety protocol. But the, so anybody who was, because uh, you'd still allowed kids on the ship, and the, the granted, Celebrity is known as being an older cruise line and more geared towards adults, but there were still some children on the ship, and any time that they got off the boat or on the boat, they had to go down to Quasar, medical. which was a, yeah, which was basically right next to medical to do a rapid COVID test. So during one of these tests, um, I think it was on Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday, yeah, because Wednesday was my birthday. So I was, Thomas. yeah. Yeah, so on Thursday, sitting in the hot tub, chatting with some folks from California, and all of a sudden, our captain comes on over the radio and was just like, um, attention, everyone, we have, you know, we were, we just wanted to let you know to be fully transparent that somebody on this ship who was, who was vaccinated has tested positive for COVID. Um, the, another thing on the safety protocols is you had to wear a tracking bracelet, which was a, um, I called it a tracelet. A tracelet is, yeah, what they called it. But anytime that you were not in your room, you had to have your tracelet on, whether it be on your bags or your person or whatever that would look like. If you're on the ship, off the ship, doesn't matter. Um, but it was for contact tracing. So it would it would tell them any time that you've come in contact. And we saw this, the reason why this was necessary is whenever the guy tested positive for COVID. So whenever he tested positive, he they tested 11 other people who was in close contact with him because of the tracelet. Mm -hmm. So anybody in his everybody in his party got tested, and then he got tested, or and then anybody who came in contact with him got tested. We were thankfully lucky enough not to have met this individual while we were on the ship, so we were fine. But they tested him; he was the only one who tested positive. But they removed him the next day. We were reporting in the Bahamas, and then they flew him home in, with private transportation. So it was they held him in medical and they were very like they were very very serious about um, how like if you felt sick if you had mm -hmm. like and going on the islands was really intense like I thought America had some pretty intense COVID rules and regulations but compared to what we saw on the islands like you were wearing masks 100% outside you couldn't walk into a store like they would let you walk into a store and then Jennifer got locked out I walked into a Pandora to go get a charm for my bracelet and she was like 10 steps behind us and Will and I walked in and they locked us in the door like so it was so just us limit. Was, yeah it was Whenever just us people... in the store I was mm -hmm. like wow this is wild yeah um that's good though yeah but overall it didn't feel aggressive I felt super safe doing all of this stuff Nobody was reckless. They were like, they cleaned the boat all the time. People were walking around with their little, you know, cleaners. So I, And the whole staff, while they're vaccinated, they still had to wear masks. Wear masks. masks. Yep, they did. Yeah, the even, even whenever we asked, like, oh, our, I completely fell in love with several of the staff that we, in fact, I've got to write them a review. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm in the process of, like, writing my heartfelt review so I could submit it. But um, 
yeah, we even asked some of them. We're like, can you please take your mask off just for a second so yeah. we can see your face? Because we would never recognize you yeah. if we, because we talked to And they look so around, see who's uh, looking, uh, and then like drop it real quick and bring it right back up. Um, yeah, um, it you was, connect with people that way too. Uh, like it's not just, yeah. I mean, a lot is said with the eyes, yes, but like it's the full, like the full expression, mm -hmm. everything. So For sure. Yeah, Izzy, if you're looking for a cruise, I can't say enough about Celebrity. They were really incredible. Um, and we were lucky enough. We were the first people to go back on the Equinox. We were the first sailing of the ship from the last 18 months that mm -hmm. have been um, been out. So I think I'm going to try to go back out in December, pending everything that happens. Because, you know, the, with this whole variation of COVID, that everything seems to be locking down again. So in the event Delta. that Delta, with the Delta variant, if everything tends to be okay, I'm gonna to try to go back out in December because they have the edge running um, that is doing a Panama Panama mm. cruise. It sounds like a lot of fun. Never been to Panama, never been to Colombia. So mm. yeah, so TBD on that. Um, anyway, the other crazy things that happen, not crazy things that happen. So it's like every, like we have a dope, like we really have a dope team. Like Josh, he is an associate broker. Anything that could happen, like he can step in and fix it right away. He's actually been in real estate the longest out of all of us. Yeah. So, and he's got more knowledge than any of us. And our crew at KW, like our broker and our team leader is so clutch. So we have um, our new agent, Kendra, who love her. And she, this is not her first rodeo in business. She owns a consulting company and she's been li living and working in New York for many, many years. So she has her first client under contract that she got under, that she got from an open house. She's killing it. They're so excited. It is four days before settlement. So surely I'm like, nothing can possibly happen. You know, it's fine for us to leave. Everything is good. So, like, Jen, and Jen's been clutched through this whole thing, too. Like, through the process, like, if Kendra has any questions, she comes to Jen, she comes to me, she comes to Will, she oh, goes sure. to Josh, she goes to everybody. Yeah. Um, that's, again, the power of a team. So, everything is going really great. And then, all of a sudden, we get on the boat, and I get a, I get a message from the co-op agent. And I'm like, what is happening right now? Well, it turns out that the, that the seller could not get... Well, number one, they were supposed to have, they wanted to rent back, but that never was articulated to us in the beginning of the contract, so there was no rent back put into the contract. And then the their new build ended up pushing back quite some time. So it was like, it was like almost like a month, I think is what it came out to be. So now mm -hmm. you've got this poor family who has children, their stuff is getting pushed out. You've got the buyers who are under the gun because their lease ends, they don't have anywhere to go. Like it was such, it was like the perfect That's storm of, storm. yeah, the perfect yeah. storm of terrible things that could have, ha could have yeah. happened during this. And so you've got the seller's agent who's upset because they need to rent back and can't get it and then he's trying to articulate this to the buy side and the buy side's upset and and there was just a lot a lot of high emotions on both sides going going far that it, and it seemed to get a little bit nasty there for a second and so next thing you know i'm like i'm like messaging our broker and i'm messaging our team leader and i'm like guys i need your help like I, poor kendra is stranded out here all alone on a lonely island i can't make a phone call the selling the seller wants to talk to me i can't talk to them because i got this 230 thirty dollar phone call i told you guys about earlier um and it was just like so i'm just like sitting there right outside of celebrity central like on my phones firing off all these emails and nobody was talking to me and i'm like today's the worst day ever i don't know what's happening because like they ended up sitting in settlement for three hours because they couldn't get the other side to sign anything but but it was over a miscommunication like it was all over miscommunication wow. um so the i mean the great thing is, is that everything ended up turning out really well in the end josh ended up going to settlement with kendra to be able to sit there and okay. yeah to have a conversation and to not necessarily protect but like be yeah, able to answer any questions yeah. because like she said i'm a new agent i don't know everything that i need so having an associate broker there then having our broker uh, at keller williams contact the other side and say like just like try to smooth everything over and see what we can do for everybody like it was just it was like everything bad that could have happened in the last 72 hours before settlement happened oh, like Katie said, it's always the last 72 hours uh -huh. she is <laughs> it's so true Facts. famous last words yeah so that's that's exactly what happened yeah. and it was very and it's like and at the end of the day like kendra killed it like she mm -hmm. she stayed because we our jobs as real estate agents is to protect our client and like you can try and like you know, you can feel for the other side, but at the end of the day, like the only person feelings don't matter. Feelings don't matter. So the only person at the end of the day that matters is your client. Mm -hmm. So you representing them to the full, like the fullest of your ability, and not breaking like mm -hmm. breaking face. That's the difference between a great realtor and a good realtor. Yeah. You know, so we we live by a motto is like win win or no deal, but unfortunately, there was no 
win-win in this yeah. situation. And it's rare that those ever come across. But make sure that you have somebody on your side that, you know, that you can trust to have your best interest in mind. Mm-hmm. Even whenever it it feels bad. <laughs> like, you know, even when it feels bad. Yeah. So kudos to Kendra for killing it and kudos to Josh for stepping up and being like Daddy Warbucks. I don't know, not Daddy Warbucks, yeah. but like, you know. Like the old man Withers yeah. <laughs> comes in with the knowledge. Yeah. It was pretty. Papa Bear stepped yeah, in. Yeah, Papa Bear stepped in, which was really incredible to see. Yeah. And and thank you to to Lisa and Mariah too for stepping up and helping yeah. her feel comfortable. So it's like during the recap, as soon as we got home, I was like, girl, you got to tell me everything that happened. And so I was on the phone with her for an hour, and she was just she's like, everybody was so wonderful. Yeah. I felt so supported, and I was like, praise God, because like yeah. the like my biggest fear is that she was going to be left out in like the wind. I'm like, somebody needs to get me a helicopter. I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a Well, that's a reminder, too. Like, I know I had to learn that early on. And I will say, like, I'll preface my clients with, like, worst case scenarios until they sign at settlement. Like, I don't get excited about much of anything. I'm like, yay, okay, great, awesome, one step closer. But remember, we still have, or not but, but, and remember, we still have got, 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 got to get through. Mm -hmm. And this could happen, and this could happen. Like, basically instilling the fear of God in them. them. Yeah, Yeah. and then that way when everything goes smoothly, it's like, whoo, or if something hits the fan, it's like, okay, well, we knew this could have happened, so what are we going to do? The latest thing that ever hit me at settlement was, I was at settlement for the Roses in Maryland, and it was a referral from... Um, Eeyore. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. A, yeah, it was a referral from Eeyore, and so we were, and we were sitting at, um, we were sitting at settlement, and the investor on the other side was such a mean person, like he was just a very mean spirited person, and he said something, and I was like, "No, you're not going to bully us into closing." Yeah. He literally got up and walked out of settlement. He said, "Then I will not sell this house to you," and then he got up and walked out of settlement. And all of us... Okay, failure to perform. <clears throat> right, and we just looked at the attorney and we're like, are you going to fix this? Or are we going to have to sue him? Because this is insane. Yeah. So the attorney ended up having to chase after him and, like, explain to him, like, no, you can still get... The seller, like, you don't have any contingencies. You right. can't just not sell the house unless yeah. you want to get sued, which is fine. I mean, more money for them at the end of the day. If that happens, it's going to be a pain in the behind. But, yeah. yeah, people are funny because, like, that's the thing that you have to realize is, like, we're dealing with people and emotions, yeah. and that's the unpredictable part about real estate. Yeah. It's, like, contractually, we can have all of this stuff put out there. But if you've got somebody who, who has issues on the other side, whether it be because I'm a woman and he didn't like the fact that a woman stood mm-hmm. up to him and was assertive because, woo, honey, that happens all the time, too. That's fun in this business. Um, some of these some of these guys out there, no offense to you, gentlemen out there, because, you know, if you're on we our We got some page, pigs in the world. We got some pigs in the world, yeah. Who has But women can act pigs. funny, too. Women can act funny towards men as well. Oh, like that's it, true. You know, it, it yeah, goes it, goes, it goes both ways. For just sure. I haven't had a woman act funny towards me personally. So if I'm talking about my per- – like, my experience yeah. has only been because – men have had an issue with a female asserting themselves in mm-hmm. the in the transaction. So that's always hilarious to me. Um, but anyway, that's all that is. Yeah. So that was the, yeah, the everything going rocky was the big one. Jen's issues um, with the, were minimal, yeah, the... Yeah, which were minimum in the grand scheme yeah. of things, true. Um, don't, don't forget to call your cell phone carrier. Um, Check your appliances before you leave oh, when you get back. That's true a life story. lesson for everybody out there in these streets. So, <laughs> what happened to your what happened to your water heater? Well, I'm psycho about checking for like plumbing issues anyway. So like about once every two weeks, I'll just like open up under cabinets and under sinks and stuff and make sure that there's like no drips or anything like that. So did that before leaving for the trip. And then when we got back, I forgot to do it Monday. We got back like 2 a.m. Sunday. Well, mm-hmm. Monday, 2 a.m. Um, forgot to do it Monday. Tuesday... Checking my mail from the night before, and I see this disgusting water bill or electric bill, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> so it prompted me to go look at the furnace to see oh, if like the filter needed to be replaced, if it was you. like working extra hard. No, it was something else that they got me with that I forgot happens when you like you know start a new, I guess like electric bill, whatever, some installment situation. They like bill oh yeah, you they bill you months, over so three I'm months. Like, what? <laughs> but anyway, glad I went and checked because there was water sitting in the pan of the hot water tank. Uh-huh. So, I made a call. I was like, yep, this is what's going on. This is how much it's going to cost. What are we going to do? And had a contractor come out yesterday to assess it and give his, you know, his professional opinion. I called one of my HVAC guys, got his opinion. 
um, and somebody's coming out to replace it today. So, uh, but had I not like, I would have ended up checking eventually, but I don't think if it would have, I don't think it would have been yesterday that I checked if I didn't open up that bill and be like, what's the furnace doing? <laughs> um, she opens up bills. So, yeah. That's a re- I should probably start opening up bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. Don't. It's all set on auto pay, but I mm-hmm. want to see what I'm paying. <laughs> and the breakdown <laughs> and usage and like yeah. yeah yeah that's smart so yeah so that's fine but you know it's a reminder and you know you went to rise your home in November before and after vacation mm-hmm. check all your systems make sure things are good change out your filters what every quarter yeah well or it depends on which kind because every you have to look at your filter and see what the life expectancy is, is on that right. specific filter so. well and then if you've got pets and yeah. all that plays a yeah. part too for sure we change ours every two months though yeah, but I have two to four dogs in Indian time. So, no. um, oh, Shut this Stuart says Easton me. is Easton Ivy is an awesome team. Yes, we are. Thank oh, you, sir. We agree. Thanks. Um, shut off main water before you leave town. Says yeah. Katie. That's smart very too. smart. I didn't do that. <clears throat> Speaking of, it, so in your bathroom, whenever Will, so Will replaced the like hand lily thing, little flusher, uh, the little flusher yeah. thing a while ago, and he, I guess he replaced it with like a this the different side of it. So I was like. I was, what was I doing? It was the day that we came, it was the day we came home. It was Monday. I had run back in to grab something and I was like, why is, there's nobody in the house. And I was like, why is the water tank running? And I was like, what the hell? So I run, I run upstairs. I'm checking all the toilets and I'm checking all, like all the faucets. And I was like, nothing is on. And then I go and I was like, you son of a biscuit. <laughs> like, like, was like, how long was that? Well, it was because he had, he went to that, that room that morning. So yeah. probably six hours at oh, that okay. point. Okay. But I was like, could this, because I was like, could it have been the cleaning ladies? Because whenever we're mm-hmm. gone, I always have the cleaning ladies come and like clean the house while we're gone or whatever. And so I come home. And I was like, did they accidentally like flush it whenever they were flushing the cleaning supply, like cleaning stuff out of it? And it's been running for three days. I'm going to have a, or no, yeah, yeah, it would have been three days. I was like, I'm going to have a, an ex- really expensive water bill is absurd. So I've got to get somebody to come over and like actually yeah, fix that thing. It. Yeah, because it's just the most. And then I heard it running again yesterday and I was like, no, I'm going to yeah. put a sign out there. Right. Being a homeowner sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to help you with all that. I know, I know. I was like, I was like <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I say being a homeowner sucks until you get that payout because you sell it five years later and you got $150,000 mm-hmm. sitting in your pocket. So, <laughs> relative. Kelly saying, hey, ladies, look, look fun. How is cruising? cruising? Oh, it was fantastic, Cal. Yeah, I love it. Like, this is my first cruise, and I can tell you that I am obsessed. Like, <laughs> I 100% was the best vacation I've ever been on. The. The ship was incredible. The beds were super nice. The food was delicious. I mean, like, literally everything was bomb.com. I asked, I asked Jen, I was like, what do you prefer? Do you prefer cruising or, or all-inclusive? And she never actually answered this. So let's put her on the spot. It was cruising all-inclusive. I don't understand the difference. Like, every, it was basically all-inclusive. No, like, staying at one hotel versus, oh. like, getting, like, because it's, like, different, different, because it was cruising all-inclusive. But it's like, what do you prefer? Like being at one, like one location for five days, or like if you were able to do a five day cruise, I like do you one prefer spot. one one spot? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy the cruise mm-hmm. and I enjoy cruising, but I'm not like it. Like I told you this, I'm not like an excursion kind of gal. Like That's for true. me, I just want to like do nothing. I just mm-hmm. want to sit and literally do nothing. Lay in the sun, bake, toes in the sand, snorkel if I want to. You know, <laughs> go to the gym. Eat some food. That's about it. Yeah. I don't need to swim with dolphins and... I do. I got to swim with dolphins. Uh, <laughs> I want to do everything. I'm like, I want to zip line. I want to jump off buildings. I like... My, one of my favorite moments from the cruise is getting to jump off the catamaran. I mean, yeah, granted, it was, was only like 10 feet... Sweet. It was... <laughs> Oh it was only like 10 feet in the air, but it was so much fun. And then we met our, our friend Mike from Wales. I think he's from Wales originally. Either that or England. Anyway, he lives in Florida now. But anyways, he was on all of the excursions that we did. We saw him there. And so he was like, he was like this adorable 65-year-old man who just like was super fit. We're like, he has to be like some kind of crazy yeah. job back in the day. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so he encouraged us to do like jump off the catamaran and stuff, and so it was a lot of fun. Jen did a backflip off of it. Yeah, that's how um, I got in the water. Yeah, <laughs> in fact, Will didn't take his glasses off at some point, and they <laughs> they ended up like he had just went to Warby Parker and got these beautiful prescription sunglasses, and so like they ended up in the bottom of the ocean. Um, now, granted, it was only fifteen feet down, and 
apparently, whenever you were local to these places, yeah. you have, like, lungs of a god. And so uh, one of the guys on the ship just jumped off and, like, went down to pick catamaran up. Catamaran Capitan. Yeah, and the Catamaran Capitan jumped off the ship, went down and grabbed him. And he's like, here you go. And he's like, how did you do that? Yeah. And it's like, well, I saw where they went. He's like, I know how the boat moves. Yeah. Oh, it was cool. It was good. Well, Kelly said, cruising is the best. I like both for different reasons. Yeah. But how safe in COVID? We went through this, Kelly. If you go back to the beginning of the video, we went through all of the different safety protocols. Like, it was real. They really did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. um, we had tracer, like, contact tracing bracelets, and they were super clean. It's just, like, we went into the detail about all that. So it was cool. I don't think I will, because, you know, I'm a nervous Norma. Mm -hmm. I don't think I will do a cruise again in and, these times because yeah. um, it was it was a little I felt a little uneasy when they made that announcement. when they made the announcement um, but yeah. you know yeah in fact it's, well we only had one person pop positive the yeah. uh, the cruise that we ported next to from the Royal Caribbean they had six mm -hmm. yeah six vaccinated guests so what did Jonavi say can't believe some guy you mentioned before said wouldn't go far in real estate with tats what what are you talking about? Oh, I think she's going back down memory lane. Oh, Once got it. One time somebody told you that. Oh, yeah, well, no, I, that's true. Somebody did tell me a long time ago that I would never go far with all these tattoos. Well, at the time I had a mohawk, too, which, <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> uh, cruising is, but yeah. So I also like all inclusives, and I do like them both for different reasons. I love all of them. Um, I definitely want to go back to secrets. The spas at the all inclusives are better than the spas on the ship, even though I did find one specific girl who literally was the best massage I've ever had in my entire life on the ship. So it had these these salt rocks. The Himalayan like, salt rock. Himalayan salt rocks. So they're pretty incredible. But anyway, that's it, ladies and germs. Um, be nice to... <laughs> ladies and germs. <laughs> be nice to your realtors. Be nice to your family. Be kind to people. Be kind to people. There were some really rude people on the ship, too, that was mean to the staff, which, like... Made me want to get up and like throw them overboard. I'm like, yeah. wow, you are in a beautiful location, and these are some of the kindest people that you will ever meet because they are not who you think they should be, does not give you the right to be mean to them. Mm -hmm. um, my late self will watch the beginning. See you all in a few weeks. Excited. Love you, ladies. Yes, Love you a few too, weeks. Kelly. Quick. August 21st, Roaring 20s event. That's what she's talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, snap. Okay, fam. So we haven't even told everybody. We, fin we, got our, we finally got all of our permits, which is the reason why we hadn't talked talk about it. But we've got our big Easton Ivy event that we do every year um, at the end of this month on the... Saturday, August 21st, from 7 to 10 p.m. Yeah, from 7 to 10 p.m. And we'd be like, if you came out last year for our grand opening, we had circus performers who we did a, like, a masquerade. This year, we have doubled the performers, and we're doing it on the water, uh, and that's going to be here in Belmont Bay on the water. Uh, but we've doubled the performers. It's going to be a gangster's, like, roaring, roaring 20s situation with music, DJ, circus performers, all that fun stuff. So, yes, yay, announce yes, announce it. So we are announcing it. Please come. I will, we've sent, I believe Angie has sent out the invitation via email. If you have not gotten it and you want to come, text us or send us an email and we'll send it to you and thank you to our sponsors smart settlements and lisa with loan depot and hd bros you guys are the business incredible. um thank you huh i said incredible uh, yeah absolutely yep. incredible so um come and hang out with us and enjoy the party it'll be fun yeah yeah all right guys well we have a meeting to get to right now love you lots bye now bye